Well, good evening. This is Aaron. I'm Aaron with Bowtie Treasures here in the Bowtie Treasures studio. Live. I am a uh, Dixie Bell content creator and a brand ambassador for Would You Bend. I'm always happy to be here with you. As you pop in tonight, love for you to tell us where you're watching from and uh, excited to share some fun tips and techniques with you tonight. As always, this top drawer last night on my face, uh, Bowtie Treasures Facebook page, I demonstrated real quick how to use whitewash. And I, my goal is, I knew going into this that I was probably going to do some kind of wash, whitewash effect because I wanted to add some depth to it. But I like how the whitewash gives it a nice soft finish and adds some depth to it. I'm going for more of a spring, summer, coastal feel. And the whitewash really does the job for me. And I'll just show you a little closer so you can see um, how the white is still in the crevices. I didn't wipe it all off. That's the goal. So we're going to apply that. And you can see down below there is no whitewash. Okay, so we're going to, I'm just going to take a flat medium brush. You can use whatever size that you want. And I like to wear gloves. The only reason I like to wear gloves is because I don't want to get the glaze all over my hands. And that's yet another thing I have to clean up after I'm done. So it's not required, but I like it when I'm using the glaze just because it gets a little, it can get a little messy when you're starting to wipe all of it off. All of it off. Okay, and let me just show you the container real quick. So this is the whitewash glaze, okay. Now, I wanna be thorough on telling you there are a couple ways to apply glaze. If you don't want a lot of glaze, I would recommend two options. One, mist before you apply the glaze and then wipe it off, or two, mist and use a wet rag to wipe off the glaze. It all comes down to how much glaze you want to leave. Tonight, I'm not going to mist because I'm going to I'm not going to mist on smaller areas. And then two, I'm not using a wet rag. I'm going to use a dry rag. So it's going to leave more glaze and it's going to not wipe as much off. So try those techniques maybe on some sample boards to see which way you like best, but if you, if you're working in like the top I think I'm probably gonna to have to work a little bit more wet because it's so big, but these drawers, I'm going straight in and I'm using a dry rag to do that. And I'm going to work quickly and I'm gonna work really rather liberal on it. <clears throat> the glaze has a little bit of what we would consider some, we would have, we would, I'm gonna say that Dixie Bell's glaze has some top coat in it. And that's one reason why it has a different feel than paint. So work quickly but don't feel like you have to be so thorough and get every spot covered equally because you're wiping most of this away. Okay, so just get it in there. I definitely want to push it into the corners. I think for the next part, I'll bring the camera down a little bit lower. So let's just do this one. Size of the brush will probably mainly affect how quickly you can get the glaze on. If you're using a, too, a brush that's too small, your glaze might start setting a little too soon. So try to use one that's appropriate for the time that you have and the size of your piece. And it's not bad if you have to do some touch up too, it's okay. And it will totally be up to you if you need to do a uh, another coat. So just a dry rag. This is just a towel I cut up and I'm not trying to wipe it all off. I want some of it on there and that's where the, the dry rag should help assist you with that. You want to, I want to let the white wash kind of penetrate the paint a little bit, change the tone, lighten it up, soften it up. This is the time of year where people start thinking about spring and getting their house freshened up. And here in Pensacola, Florida, this will be a nice palette, color palette. It'll brighten up a room and give somebody a really nice new piece. And since it's vintage, we're giving this vintage piece a new life. 
okay? So that one's all done. Inspect your work, look around. Last night I worked, I pulled the drawer all the way out and put it on the table. Either way works, right? So you can see the difference, how, the, how it's a little softer than the bottom. So back to our whitewash. Just get it on there, push it into the cracks. I'm not gonna probably do the whole piece tonight, but I think you'll get the idea. I have the hardware all polished, ready to go. So after I get some satin top coat on this, it'll be ready for staging. If, remember, if you want to, you can use a wet rag if you want to wipe even more off, but you're going to have a difficult time getting it out of the cracks, all the cracks anyway, so don't. Um, but if you're going to wipe so much, it, so much of it off and it's too dark, you might need to lighten up your paint. So those are all just things to think about. Okay, let's wipe this off. I don't know about you, but I sure liked it. I, I really enjoy having a lot of styles. So if you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you probably see me put out a lot of different, I say a lot, maybe five to 10 different main techniques. But the key is whenever you think of something that you want to accomplish, most likely Dixie Bell has the products to help you accomplish it. And I'd love for you to use that link that I put in the description. See how I'm just kind of rubbing the rag around, looking for places to wipe off. So you can see here, it's okay to kind of take some of it out, but after a while, it's possible if you're gonna do this a long time, like for several minutes, you may find that you might need a more than one towel because the, the um, whitewash is going to start making your towel uh, wet and you may not get the effect you want after a while. I want this to feel hazy, light, fluffy, whatever word you would describe it. And that's all done. Okay. I like that there's a little bit of white down in the crevice that I really can't get in there. So I'm kind of making sure it gets get some all the way in there all right what do y'all think of that I think it's gonna be just a really nice soft we could do some down here while I have that drawer out because I am affecting the entire color I do you do have to put this on all the painted surfaces but I do, you do not. You could put this with a small uh, craft brush and just put it in the crevices, but I'm actually wanting this to get into the grooves of the wood. Oh, I think my table was, so you can see on the right side here how the, the highlight compared to the sides over there. It's not required, but I think it'd be a good idea if I just kept that going. So let's keep going. Now a piece this size probably would take, I would recommend that you definitely have a good 16 ounces of whitewash but a 16 ounce can go a long ways I, I my container was not full when I started this project and you shouldn't have to if you do it this way you shouldn't have to apply it more than once but really nice and fresh look let's do um, let's do one of these doors I'm not, at this point I haven't decided if I'm painting the inside 
like the three drawers that are often on the inside. But I've kind of figured that out in time. So it's quite a right to just paint right onto that. I'm kind of doing a frame. This is fun because you can be sloppy. You don't have to be super refined right now. You're wiping it off anyway. Just make sure you get that whitewash into all the crevices because that's after all the parts that's going to maintain the whitewash. And if I if I did, didn't do a good job, I'll come back. It's okay to do a little small section after it all dries. See, like I just went over the baseboard again. That's okay. Just be ready to wipe that off pretty quick. Does it make sense now why I'm wearing gloves? <laughs> it's like, I feel like I'm finger painting right now. Because it's working so fast. It's still letting me wipe it off, no problem. Chalk paint would not let me do that so well. You could try this with Voodoo Gel Stain, the uh, White Magic, but remember that Voodoo Gel Stain does not have the top coat properties that Glaze does. So I'm almost already with this technique, I am uh, protecting my paint with a little bit of top coat already. So it's, a, it's really a good win for me. And we will compare the two sides. So really love that look. Demonstrate that. So you see how I'm just wiping this down? The rag's pretty much removing the streaks. So, well, I think that's enough damage in a good way for one night, right? That right there is why I'm wearing the gloves. You see all that? So, it just, I don't have to wipe, I don't have to clean my hands now. And while you're working, all of that glaze isn't getting on the handle of your brush. So, that's really the main reason I do that. Okay, well, I'm excited to see this come together and finish out. Love for you to use that link in the description. Check out the website, bowtietreasure.com. If you haven't done so, go over to YouTube. Subscribe. Check out the, I don't know, almost 100 videos over there. I'm getting close, and I'm excited to always share that with you. I'm here with Bowtie Treasures. I'm here in the Bowtie Treasures studio. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for watching. Take care. That's the end of the show. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell before you go. Bye.